guys are we doing it am i live it's doing that weird circle thing again but i think we've got it yeah this is just weird because the screen looks really different than usual because i can't get it to go up it's this tiny little corner at the bottom of my screen, and I want to look. I want to look right at you guys. So let's see. It's weird. Bear with me. Okay. So anyway, this is too much Tuesdays. I'm Tara. Welcome. And today we are going to talk about, like we always do, a really easy energy tool that you can use right away in your life when things get to be just a little bit too much or a lot too much, because there's a lot going on right now I'm still trying to fix this thing um, so we've talked about a few different things look dashboard options no that didn't work um, then, no okay we'll do it this way so we've talked about a few different energy tools and um, I've gotten some really good feedback that these things are really helping people, which I'm really excited about for you. They've really helped me. One thing that I used to try to do for like, I don't know, 20 years at least, and used to just think that I couldn't do. I couldn't do it. I was like uniquely terrible at it of anyone in the universe. And that's meditation. I wanted to meditate. I could see that it was probably a really cool thing to meditate. And I just absolutely couldn't do it. Um, I'm just making sure that I can see your guys' comments. Yes, I can. Okay. Um, I felt like I couldn't do it. We're going to get more to that, more into that in just a minute. But first, I want to tell you why you even would want to meditate. Because that's a super good question. Why, why would you? Is it just something that people who are like super spiritual do? Or is it something that people who uh, have a lot of problems do or who have a special teacher do? And it, not necessarily, you know? Um, there's all kinds of different meditation, kinds of meditation. I'll get into that in a minute too. But first, I want to just tell you why you would even want to meditate. And that is because <laughs> life is just so freaking stressful. And I think you might be unhappy a lot of the time. And this can help with that. And it's been proven that meditation any kind of meditation even just trying to meditate and feeling like you can't do it but even just sitting there um has been shown many many times in a lot of different studies to lower cortisol levels what is cortisol it's that chemical that's in your body um that gets way 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 increased when you are stressed and then it makes you feel even more stressed than you already did and it's a vicious cycle so we don't want our cortisol to be high unless we are running away from a lion or something you know we would like our cortisol to be under control and low so research shows that meditation lowers cortisol levels research also shows that meditation um, raises serotonin levels serotonin is the feel good neurotransmitter chemical that your body makes so if you are um like in that good stage of a brisk walk or any kind of exercise that you do and feeling like yeah you know that's serotonin if you are um eating something really good a nice piece of dark chocolate that's serotonin if you are having sex that's serotonin there's some dopamine in there too but it's serotonin, that's the happiness chemical. We wanna raise that and meditation does that. Meditation also has been shown to increase focus, the ability to focus, which God knows we all need more of, and to improve memory. And I'm so proud of myself for remembering that because the really funny thing is, <laughs> usually when I talk to people about meditation, I forget that one point that it does, it lowers cortisol, it raises, is a serotonin and <laughs> it improves memory and it's not very good for my case when I go and it um, improves memory <laughs> but it really does so maybe you can tell that I've been meditating lately but not for like an hour a day I'll tell you about that in a minute also meditation has been proven to increase creativity so sometimes it sounds like well if you're an artist or an actor or something 
But we need to be creative, all of us in our everyday life, you need to be creative as a business person. How are you going to pivot to make your business COVID friendly? Or how are you just gonna, in a normal time, you know, get customers in? How are you going to solve problems with your team? And that's another thing that meditation has been proven to do is it improves people's ability to work on teams because this is my little interpretation of it. I think it improves that because it helps us to be able to feel calm and listen so that we're not just like, but my idea is this. We're like, oh, I see you feel this and I actually feel like this. And now I'm going to listen to you again. And you know, it, this is what our world needs, isn't it? All right. So that's why you would even want to meditate. And that's what research shows about meditation. The next question, pretty obviously, is, well, what is meditation? So there's a lot of different kinds of meditation. Um, one kind that's really popular these days is mindfulness meditation, especially in the United States. And mindfulness is being of what is happening right inside you and inside you. It's just being mindful. Um, there's Zen meditation, which is more about achieving a certain spiritual state, well, the word achieve isn't very Zen-like, but it, it's with, with practice and with the teacher, you would be able to eventually reach a state of, uh, you know, complete peace and, um, and being as, as highly evolved as you can possibly be. There's um, TM, Transcendental Meditation, where you get a mantra and again have a teacher. Um, it's, there's many different kinds of meditation. Today, I'm going to tell you about my kind of meditation that I do, which is sort of a combination. It's mostly mindfulness, but it also gets a little bit more spiritual, and there's a really good reason to that for that. So let me just tell you about that. So when I first started trying to meditate, which is about 20 years ago, because I was, I've always been, you know, since I was like four years old on the spiritual path, and about 20 years ago, I was like, okay, if I'm going to really, you know do this spiritual thing, I have to meditate. That's what I have to do. And looking back, I'm not quite sure where I was getting my ideas about what meditation is or how to do it. I, I think I was getting it from a yoga class. So that person wasn't really a meditation teacher. They were a yoga teacher. And uh, I think also from um, an acting class that I was in and from, it was mainly from my acting, my scene partners and, um, from a, a random book that I got and I would you know kind of I would talk to people I would maybe go to a, an evening every once in a while but it, it I really wasn't training with anyone and if I had been I wouldn't have had all these maybe hopefully I wouldn't have had all these crazy ideas about meditation not so crazy though because I think a lot of people think this so what I was somehow told or at least what I understood that they were saying was that um, I should clear my mind of all thoughts. And I was like, yes, I'm going to do that because I want to meditate. I want to be really, really spiritual and involved. And so I would sit, and plus you were supposed to sit like in a lotus position, right? So I would sit and I would, you know, do this with my hands and um, close my eyes and try to clear my mind of all thoughts over and over and over. And I couldn't do it. You know why? It's impossible to do that. You can't do that. In fact, that's not what meditation really is. That's what meditation is not, um, trying to clear your mind of all thoughts. Our minds have thoughts. Our brains produce thoughts, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a thing. Um, so that's, that's though, how I, I, it made me feel like such a failure. Anybody else comment like, me too or amen or something if if you have felt that way too that like you try and try and try to meditate you try and try and try to clear your mind and thoughts and you kind of can't do it um i even considered very strongly considered starting a website called i hate meditating.com the domain was available i looked it up <laughs> because i wanted to like somehow say to everybody that like uh, you, you can be spiritual without this doing this crazy meditation thing that is just depressing anyway, you know? Um, but I didn't because I knew, I didn't open that website because I knew 
that it was really negative to say I hate anything. And I knew that there was like something off if I was like sitting there hating on meditation. But the reason I'm harping so much on this is I want to save other people from from uh, doing this. Um, one of the most helpful, so now I've read a lot of really good books on meditation. One of the most helpful books on meditation that I've read, believe it or not, is called Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics by Dan Harris. I love this book. It's written also, uh, co-authored with Jeff Warren, who's kind of a warmer, fuzzier, more heart-centered meditator than Dan Harris is. Um, and Dan Harris makes this really great point over and over, and I'm just going to read you like two sentences from his book because it's so perfect. I cannot say this frequently enough. The goal of meditation is not to clear your mind, but to focus your mind for a few nanoseconds at a time, and whenever you become distracted, to start again. Getting lost and starting over is not failing at meditation, it is succeeding. I was like, oh, then I'm a genius because I feel like I fail at meditation a lot because I keep having thoughts. And then I kept, you know, self-flagellating for, oh, you had another thought. Plus it was a negative thought. You're so bad at this. And then I want to read you one more sentence that Dan Harris says because it's so true. I think this pernicious clear the mind misconception stems in part from the fact that meditation has been the victim of the worst marketing campaign for anything ever because that's what people kind of make you think. Clear your mind and you have to also talk like this when you're meditating or leading a meditation. You can't talk like a normal human being. You have to do the whisper talk. And it's not true. You can be who you are and meditate. So meditation is not clearing your mind, but what is it? It is in the world of Tara, in my opinion, observing your thoughts and, this is the hard part, accepting your thoughts. So that's it. So you sit, you can close your eyes. I, I usually close my eyes, but you could just kind of stare in front of you. You can be where you are, especially if it's something beautiful. If I'm outside in the woods and it's a gorgeous day, I don't want to close my eyes off from that. I actually then do a meditation with my eyes open with just a soft gaze at this beauty in front of me. But whatever you want to do, close your eyes or focus on some beauty and then you do, I'm going to tell you in a second how I connect, how I do the meditation, and then I'm going to lead you, by the way, in a really easy meditation that I think you're going to like a lot. Um, but you close your eyes, you do your connection, and then, of course, you're going to have a thought. And instead of like wanting to kill yourself for having a thought, you go, oh, having a thought, letting it go. That's it. Observe it, accept that you had the thought, even if the thought was like, I don't know, horrible. Even if the thought was like, I hate my boss. She's so mean and I think she's going to hell. I hate her. You know, oh, I, I was just thinking about hating my boss. That's it. We don't usually do this for ourselves or for others. We don't usually accept ourselves. If you've been kind of tuning in every Tuesday or if you've ever had a session or anything with me, you um, know that with EFT, with tapping, that's what we do. We go, even though I have this, I unconditionally accept myself. Very similar to meditation. So a lot of people with, with just mindfulness meditation, you would stop there. Just having a thought, accepting it, letting it go, and going back to whatever your little focus point is. Um, I need to take things a step further. And I'm not sure if that's just how I am and who I am because I'm a really spiritually oriented person and I know a lot of you are too. I don't know if that's just who I am or if really in order to get to that place of sort of elevated consciousness, if it's really necessary. But I have to feel my connection to the universe. That's why I meditate. 
I, I don't meditate actually to lower my cortisol and, and raise my serotonin. Sometimes I do just to calm myself down and make myself happier or make myself kinder to other people. But usually the reason, the real motivator for me to meditate is that it helps me to not just know with my head, but to feel my connection with the divine energy, with source is my kind of favorite word for it, universe if you want to call it that, God if you want to call it that, creator of all that is, whatever that energy that runs through all things is for you, what meditation really can do is remind you of your connection to it. You're already connected. You don't have to like, oh, I got to go connect somehow. You're just reminding yourself, letting yourself feel rather than just know your connection to the universe. So that's what I'm doing. And in fact, let me um, read you just one sentence from another uh, medi incredible meditation teacher that I'm quite sure you've heard of, and that's Deepak Chopra. He's written like 2,000 books or something, but I think this is his latest one. It's called Total Meditation. And in it, he, he talks about a lot of things, but he, he kind of focuses on this concept of consciousness and how we are conscious and yet a lot of our modern lives takes place in an almost unconscious state. It's like automatic pilot. Like if you've ever, uh, you know, eaten breakfast and let's say you take, you know, three vitamins and one medication every morning and you get to the end of your breakfast and you go, did I take my pills? I don't I think I took my pills. You literally don't remember what you yourself did five minutes ago. Not because there's anything wrong with your memory, but because you weren't conscious. Did you ever, oh, this is the thing that gets me. How many times a day do you look for your cell phone? <laughs> you know, you had it in your hand literally 90 seconds ago, but you don't know where you put it. It's not that you can't remember 90 seconds before. It's that you were unconscious because we're all thinking of so many things, you know, let's have compassion for ourselves. We don't even know where we put our cell phone because we're so disconnected from our actual consciousness. So Deepak Chopra has this beautiful sentence, the divided self has done its worst by disconnecting us from our source and then convincing us that this disconnect is normal. It almost makes me cry to read that sentence. The divided self has done its worst by disconnecting us from our source and then convincing us that this disconnect is normal. It's not normal, you guys. It's not normal to go through your whole life or your whole day feeling disconnected from the universe, from yourself, from your loved one. Ready? I'm going to now give you some meditation hacks. We've been, you know, talking about some of the stuff already, but I'm going to kind of um, boil it down for you here. Meditation hacks, and then we're going to get to the guided meditation. Meditation hacks. First, please get in a comfortable position for you. You do not have to, I hope I'm not offending anyone who's like a really strict meditator. You do not have to be in the lotus position. The lotus position, like with your legs, with kids we call it crisscross applesauce, it, it's very uncomfortable for a vast majority of people. It's actually how I'm sitting right now because I'm like super flexible and it's just, it's kind of comfortable for me. But I don't sit, I do have a, a, a cushion, a meditation cushion that a dear friend gave me and I, I do use it sometimes. But really, most of the time, I sit in my chair because I need back support most of the time. And it's okay. Get however makes you feel comfortable. It's very likely not all uh, pretzeled up. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Here's a really good meditation hack that it took me many, many years to find. Um, time yourself. Not, not time yourself. That sounds like it's a race. But um, set a time limit for your meditation and then go by and, and make it, you know, I use my, my phone, I put it on do not disturb and then set it for usually 10 minutes. I, you know, I would love to sit here and say 30 minutes every morning and every night. No, usually 10 minutes. If I'm rushed, 
Five. Five minutes of meditation is fabulous. If you do five minutes of meditation every day, I promise you that within a month your life will be different, probably less time than a month. If you can do 10 minutes, that's great. But the trick is to, at the end of five minutes or whatever you choose, to actually then stop and get up and go do something else and to pat yourself on the back because you did a good job. You sat and you meditated. So if if you uh, set, let's say you choose 10 minutes like me, and, and at the end of the 10 minutes you go, you know, your timer goes off, beep, 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 and you're like, oh, shoot. At that whole time, the first half I was thinking about my work and how I'm so behind, and the second half I was thinking about how upset I am with my teenage son or whatever. I better set another 10 minutes. No, you did your 10 minutes and you're done. Congratulations on that. You can do another 10 minutes later at lunchtime or in the evening or in half an hour, but just do the time that you set. Why? Because otherwise the next day when you go to do it, you'll feel like a failure. Remember I sat there for 20 minutes yesterday and I couldn't even do it. I forget it. You know, it, it's good. You want to breed your success. You want to go ahead Pat yourself on the back. Good job. Good try. I respect that you tried. And then tomorrow, it's going to be even better. So set a time limit for yourself and stick to it. That's your first hack. No, your first hack was get in a comfortable position for you. Your second hack is set a time and stick to it. Third hack is please be super, super kind to yourself about this. Because meditation is a skill, just like anything else. It, I think it's tricky because it seems, I think for two reasons. One, it's a spiritual thing and so you're thinking like, well, I'm spiritual so I should be good at this. So if I'm not good at this, it means I'm not spiritual. I'm not spiritually good. And that's like devastating to people, you know? Um, so I think that's one reason why people are so hard on themselves. The other reason I think people are so hard on themselves about meditation is that it, it looks so freaking easy, you know? It's like, you what, you couldn't sit there with your eyes closed? You, could, you failed at that? You know, <laughs> it's actually, it's not easy. It's, it's one of the most challenging things you could possibly do. So I want you to think of it like you would anything else, like a skill. Like if you went out surfing for the first time ever and you like wiped out on your surfboard, would you be like, I'm such an idiot. How come I'm wiping out? I should be able to surf, you know? <laughs> and what about after a week? What about after six months of surfing? Would you be super mad at yourself and give up because you're still not like, surfing perfectly probably not you would probably feel like oh okay you know maybe i need to spend some time practicing this maybe i could like take a class or something you know? so be super kind to yourself about meditation another hack for you greet your body as you meditate as you the very first thing you do and be friends with it so this is how i usually start a meditation i start down at my toes and I, I sit comfortably and I go, hello, toes. Hey, I see you. I feel you. I go up through my feet, through my ankles, through my legs. That's the easy part. When you get up to the, like, the, the organs, you know, the, the things that might be like not operating how you want them to be. My shoulder, which is giving me a little bit of grief right now. And I'm having to like go to the chiropractor and, you know, like I get to that. And instead of trying to like fix my shoulder, even heal my shoulder. I'm just saying hi to my shoulder. I'm greeting it. Hey, oh, there seems like there's a little pain here, shoulder. Wow, I really see that. I want to be your friend. And then I go on down the arm. Okay, so greet your body. And then when you get to the top of your head and you've greeted every cell, I, I'm going to lead you in a, a few moments in the Theta Healing Meditation, which was uh, created by Viana Steibel, who's an incredible teacher and who's the person who, you know, through her technique of Theta Healing, convinced me that I'm not terrible at meditating, that I can meditate, and that it's easy, and that it's like our God-given right, you know? It's not some mysterious, really super hard thing. So um, we're going to do that. But what I do is then find, remember I said, a, a place that you're going to connect with um, and I use a lot of people use um, their nostrils like where you can feel the breath coming in and out and you can do that if you want keep bringing your focus back to that 
Um, other people use their breath. Really, a lot of people use their breath. This is one of the reasons I hated meditating because everybody told me to count my breaths. And it was so boring and it felt like torture. And so I hated it. But for some reason, it really works for a lot of people. So you can do that. You can breathe very slowly in and out. And you can count your breaths up to 10 and then back down again. Or just count your breaths up to three over and over. But have some kind of focus. Sometimes I make my focus all the way up and out, up and out, like we do in the Theta Healing Meditation. And I make my focus the seventh plane of existence. We call it that sort of ocean of flowing, sparkling light that is, in my mind, representing the divine source. And I just focus on that. That's another hack. Instead of just like, okay, I'm going to sit here for 10 minutes counting my breaths, you know, think of it as, oh, this is my opportunity today to feel my connection with the universe. To me, that is much more inviting than I'm going to go sit and meditate and focus on my breaths and try not to have thoughts. <laughs> I'm going to go and feel my connection to the universe much more appealing and motivating. Next, just the way that you, this is your next hack, just the way that you greeted every cell of your body, every part of your body. When you have thoughts, and you will, greet your thoughts too. And greet them like an old familiar friend or at least an old familiar relative. So you're going to be like, oh, for example, the thought about work. The thought about how I'm behind at work and plus I don't like my boss. Okay? Oh, instead of being like, I'm having a thought again. I can't believe it. It's so negative. I wish I could stop. Ugh. You know, you're going to go, oh, the thought about how I hate my job. Hi. Hi. See you later. That's why I say greet it like an old family member. Because the thing about family is that they're going to be there. You're going to see them again. I mean, now we all realize with COVID how maybe you won't see them at the next holiday. But someday, usually, you'll see them again. So you don't have to engage with them right this very second during your little 10 minutes of meditation. You can have that thought about how you hate your job 10 minutes from now. So you just go, hey, thought about how I hate my job. See you later. But you, you accept it. Hi. You don't hate on it. You don't say, get away from me like it's some kind of demon. You know, you just like, hey, yeah, see you later. That's it. Okay, and find a focus that you like, okay? Not something that you, you know, like I did for the first 10 years I tried to meditate. I, I, I knew I didn't like counting my breaths, but I thought that's what you were supposed to do. So I kept doing it. You know, if you don't like the focus that you've been using in meditation, use something else. <laughs> Somebody taught me something really nice the other day. Um, we were doing a, like a PTA workshop at my daughter's school. And they had a mindfulness expert come, and I was like, oh, cool. Is he going to say anything I haven't already known, you know? And he did. He said, when you meditate, you can think about, if you would like to try this, going up your finger as you breathe in, and then down as you breathe out, and then up the next one. This works really well for kids, too, but us adults also. And down the next finger, up breath, breathing in, down, breathing out. Okay, so that's one thing, that's your focus. And you know what, for some reason, this feels really good. It tickles in like this very calm, pleasant way. And you can just do this over and over. When you get to here, you go back again, you know? So, those are your hacks. I am also going to lead you now in this Theta Healing Meditation that really has made a huge difference for me in my life and in how I view meditating. You ready? Okay, here we go. So get comfortable. Close your eyes unless you're in some beautiful place and you want to focus, you know, on, uh, have a soft focus on the beauty around you. Close your eyes and just imagine going down into the earth and scooping up a ball of energy from the earth. Again, this is a meditation that Vianna Stiebel taught all of us in Theta Healing. And you scoop up that ball of energy from the earth and you imagine it coming up through the soles of your feet. And now that ball of flowing, powerful earth energy is moving up through your feet, through your legs, 
warming and glowing through each cell of your body, coming all the way up your legs, getting to your torso, and moving up through each chakra of your torso, up slowly. The energy is coming up. When you get to your shoulders, make sure you visualize the energy coming down your arms to your fingertips. And then it moves up your throat, up your neck, up your jaw, where you probably keep a lot of tension, up your face, up your head. And then when you get to the top of your head, there's like a circle on top of your head called your crown chakra. That ball of energy pops right out your crown chakra. And now in your mind's eye, it looks like a ball of light. It's hovering just a couple inches above your head. And now you imagine what color that ball of light is for you. Maybe it's just glowing golden. Maybe it's like blue or pink or green, whatever color you want it to be. You put your consciousness into that ball of energy and light and let it rise up and out and up and out and up and out. Out through the sky, up through the stars, out of our galaxy, out of our universe up and out and up and out through different layers of light and dark and light and dark. And finally, off in the distance, you imagine a little window of sparkling effervescent white light. You slip right through that window and you find yourself on the other side floating in an ocean of sparkling white light and you don't really feel the boundaries of your ball of energy anymore because you have remembered your oneness with this ocean of light and unconditional love which is really what it is this place this source a place where there is just it is just acceptance, just unconditional love. It's where you're from, where we'll all go back to, and where you're always, always connected to, no matter what, at all moments. And you get to float there. So once you're kind of up there, you can focus on that flowing ocean of light, that's your focus that you'll go back to after you have any kind of thought like, oh, hi, thought. Yep, the thought about how I'm worried about my children. Oh, and now the thought about how I really don't know if I'm going to meet the deadline at my work. Hi, you guys. I'll see you in a little while. Go back to that ocean of light. Or you can say back to that crown chakra on top of my head. Back to my diaphragm where I feel the breaths going in and out. Whatever your focus is. So that's it, you guys. It's hard and easy at the same time, and you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And if you can do it for even five minutes a day, your life is going to get better. If you can do it for 10 minutes a day, twice a day, your life is probably going to completely transform. Or if it's already fabulous, it's going to stay fabulous. So please let me know what your experience is, what your questions are. I'm at Tara at beyondyourbelief.com. Or you can just comment right here on the Facebook page. Tell me, you know, this is for real. Like, I get it that meditation can be challenging. And it also can be uh, much easier than you thought. So, so tell me either way. But it was really great to connect with you guys. And I will see you next week at Too Much Tuesdays.